Psalm 22. Starting at verse 6. Now, when you first read this, you're going to be thinking, what does this have to do with anything? It says, but I am a worm and not a man. A worm, but not a man. A worm. What does a worm have anything to do with communion? If you understood back in the ancient times what these worms that he's referring to were, in order to get the robes of the kings, see, they didn't have special manufacturing plants back then that made colors. So what you had to do is you had to use a dye. And that dye came from what they call a crimson worm. And you would smash the worm. So they would, someone would collect all the worms. And someone would be responsible for smashing all the worms. I know, I understand. But this is what they did. And then they would take all that smashed up stuff. And it was a beautiful crimson color. And they would put the robes in and they would dye the robes of kings. Our Lord was crushed. And we wear the same righteous robe. That's biblical. So that's what that means, in case you're wondering. Let's go to Isaiah. And this tells the rest of the story. 53. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start in verse 3. <coughs> he, Jesus Christ, was despised and forsaken of men. Isaiah 53. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Verse 4. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him, esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed. See, like the worm, for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourgings we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shears. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due? His grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was a rich man in his death because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many. As he will bear their iniquities, Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the booty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Turn to Romans 5. See, people today, they don't realize what he did and what he went through. Just, 
can't comprehend it or understand it. Romans 5, starting at verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Turn to 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, see, it doesn't say how or when, or what time. It says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. When He comes, we won't have to do it anymore. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the blood or the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man, this includes you, examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself. What this means is that while you're thinking about the things of the Lord and you're thinking about your life and you're thinking about your decisions and you're doing this, this gives you an opportunity to acknowledge to the Father, I made this mistake. And he's faithful to forgive you and cleanse you of unrighteousness. Period. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly by acknowledging your sins, you're judging your body rightly. You're doing the right thing. For this reason, many of you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. This passage is so important. Look at those three words, weak, sick, and sleep. This is referring, keep in mind when this was written and who this was written to. This is to the Corinthian church. They were taking communion in an unworthy manner. They were literally, if you read Corinthians here, they were drunk, fighting, caught stealing, having all, fighting in the middle of church over communion. That's why he says some of you are weak and sick and some sleep. They're under discipline from God. Weak. If you look at it, weak means under discipline. Those that are under discipline. Those that are sick are under intensified discipline. They're unhealthy. Something is really wrong with them. And sleep means they're gone. They're dead. He's saying, when you do communion, do it for the right reasons. Because if you don't, there's discipline for those who don't do it. That's what basically this passage means. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. But if we judged ourselves rightly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord in order that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home so that you may not come together for judgment and the remaining manners I shall arrange when I come. See? I mean, could you imagine us fighting over these little things? 
how crazy that would be. But if you think about it, when they would do communion in the old days, they'd have a big gigantic loaf of bread, a big one, and they'd be ripping it off. And, 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 and literally, I believe in me that some of the men said, honey, don't cook. We're, we'll eat a communion. And that's what they were fighting over. I hope your wife didn't starve you for this. Because if she did, you're in trouble. Because <laughs> it's not going to fill you up. But what it is going to do, it's going to give us an opportunity to glorify Him through communion. Which is what it's all about. Now, we're going to take a moment in silent prayer to acknowledge anything that the Lord puts on our heart. And then I will need somebody. Dang, come on. Come on here. To distribute them. You can do it next time. Boy, you got the mandate. You're barefoot. Where are your shoes? It's fine. I told Moses to take off his shoes. I guess you got that commandment or something. Um, We're going to take a moment of silent prayer, and then she's going to walk around and distribute these. Is it bread? Here. There's bread on top. <laughs> Okay, let's pray. Father God, as we remember you and we remember what Jesus did for us, we can never thank you enough that we can come together in this wonderful home that has been given to us by your grace and have this ritual in remembrance of you and all that you did for us. The fact that we have gathered here today is a testament of your faithfulness and your love for us. And just ask that as we partake in these elements that we will remember all the wonderful things that you've done. With an attitude of thanksgiving and basketfuls of thanksgiving, we can never deliver up enough thanks to you for all that you do for us. But just ask that you continue to exercise your patience on us and continue to mature us and grow us in your in grace. That we might be an influence to those that are around us in this neighborhood and beyond. We just thank you so much and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. It's a custom for us to hold the elements in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. May First Peter 1 Peter 1:18 through 20 says, "Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ." Hebrews 9:22 tells us, "Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins." In the same way, he took the cup also, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood." Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink.